Hello friends. In the previous videos, we learnt about some concepts about serializability. We also discussed about conflict serializability, and this in this particular session, we'll be discussing about view serializability. But first of all, let's take a broader view on serializability. That is, what are the various steps in which we check for a particular schedule if it is serializable or not? So, when checking for serializability. we check first of all if the schedule is conflict serializable or not if it is conflict serializable we straight away say that the schedule is serializable if in case the test fails for conflict serializability we check for view serializability now if in this case we come out with the result as the schedule is view serializable then we say that it is serializable but if in case it is not view serializable then we clearly say that it is a non serializable schedule now then let's see what is view serializability the definition is as follows it says that a schedule is said to be view serializable if it has an equivalent view equivalent schedule now let's see what is a view equivalent schedule then a schedule s dash is said to be a view equivalent schedule to s if and only if it satisfies the following three conditions the three conditions are initial read read delight sequence and the final update let's see the initial read condition first the initial read says that if t1 t2 t3 so on till tj transactions perform initial read that is read the values of data items directly from the database before any modification or write operation on the data items a b c so on till j respectively in a schedule s then none of these initial reads should be violated in its view equivalent schedule s dash now what does it basically means what is the basic notion is that if a particular transaction is reading some value from the database in a certain schedule then in its view equivalent schedule also it should be able to read that value from the database itself and it should not happen that now the value that it is reading is some modified value so we'll clearly see that with the help of an example for now let's see what is the definition or what is the meaning for the next rule which is the read write sequence so the read write sequence is that the read write conflict pairs should be in the same sequence in both the view equivalent schedules that is we cannot swap the order of read write pairs then the third on the final rule is final update it says that if ti is a transaction that updates a data item x finally at the end in a schedule s in a schedule x then ti should only update finally the data item x in the views equivalent schedule s dash now what does this mean this means that if there is some write operation being performed by some transaction in my original schedule and this write operation was the last write operation being performed by this particular transaction then in my conflict in my view equivalent schedule also the write operation being performed at the end on that data item should be performed by the same transaction now we'll see all these rules with the help of an example and hopefully you'll get a better clarity to the concept so what is it we have a schedule over here and the schedule has these operations first step is to check with the help of precedence graph method whether the schedule is conflict serializable or not so in this case when we draw this diagram what do we get So in this question if we see clearly we have two conflict pairs first is this write a and read a being performed by transaction 2 first write is being performed by transaction 2 and read is being performed by transaction 1 so we'll draw an edge corresponding to this conflict pair the edge will go from t2 to t1 right t2 to t1 i'm also labeling it over here this is 
R1 A. And similarly, we have another conflict pair over here, which is W1 B W2 B. The transition is T1 to T2. So edge, edge will go from T1 to T2. Let's label this as well. So as you can see, we have formed a cycle over here. Now if this cycle is being formed, then that means that this is acyclic and we straight away term it as a non-conflict serializable schedule. So now after this, we'll check for view serializability. For view serializability, we'll be checking for all the three conditions, right? The three conditions that we discussed earlier, initial read, final update and update. Now let's see for the initial read first, what was the initial? read initial read was that the transactions we are which are directly reading some data items from the database so over here if we check for data item a from the schedule we encounter a write operation directly in the second position that means the value of a has been modified over here that means there will be no transaction which will be reading the uh, uh, data item value from the database directly so therefore we put a cross over here that is there is no initial read corresponding to data item a we next move on for data item b in case of b we see that this is r to b written over here then we have W1B over here. So there will be no initial read after this. That means there is only one transaction performing an initial read which is T2. So we write T2 over here. Now let's let's check for final update now. Final update that means I'll have to check from end which is the transaction which is performing a write operation on the data item at the end. So over here I see that T3 is the transaction which is performing a write operation on data item B at the end. So I'll be writing T3 over here in this B column. Similarly, if I check for A, if I check for A, that means over here the transaction is T2. Right? The transaction is T2. And there is no other write over here, first of all. There is no other write operation on A. That means this is only the final update for A. So we write T2 over here. Then we also list the update operations. Update operations, that uh, they mean what are the write operations. So if I see for A, I just now saw that there was only T2 transaction performing a write operation. So I wrote T2 over here. If I see the schedule again for data item B, T1, T2, T3, all the transactions are performing write operations. So I write T1, T2, T3 over here. Fine. Now we'll be checking for the orders. Let's consider these two lines first. In this case, initial read is being performed by T2 that, and the final update is T3. That means T2 will always be in the first position because this initial read should not be violated. Because if a write statement comes before this, this won't be an initial read anymore. So the order from these two is T2 and then T3. Fine. Now, if we, let's say, take this initial read and the update statement, again, this T2 should be before everything, right? T2 should be before everything. And also, if we consider this and this, final update means this transaction should be at the end. So, if T2 is the beginning and T3 is the end, T1 is only left for the middle position. So, the order is T2, T1 and T3. T2, T1, T3 is the particular order. Now you can also check for the read-write sequence. There is no violation of read-write sequence in this particular order T2, T1, T3. Hence, this is the final serial order that we have obtained. Hopefully, you, have, you would have understood the concept of view serializability with a great clarity. In case you have any doubts, you can please post them as comments. In case you like the video, please like it and keep following for the upcoming videos. Thank you.